Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to continue practicing uh, with measuring uh, economic output in the previous video, which will be linked in the top corner. We looked at the use of the GDP deflator to make calculations, which is what we see here. So this is from the previous video, the calculations we made. And we can see in the left column the year 2019, 2020, 2021, we're looking at the U.S. economy over that time. The next column is illustrating nominal GDP. And with nominal, we have changes in prices and the quantity of output. Not a very reliable uh, macroeconomic statistic because of the two variables that are changing. And we see the increase or the decrease in nominal GDP from 21,372 billion to 20,893 billion due to the pandemic, the reduced consumption and investment spending as people were mandated to stay at home. But as we came out of the pandemic, we can see the rise in nominal GDP. The GDP deflator um, is measuring the change in prices or inflation compared to a base year. The base year is 100. And real GDP is what we calculated in the previous question. Uh, and we can see that real GDP fell from 20,354.83 billion to 19. 1,168.57 billion, again, due to the pandemic. And as we exited the pandemic, uh, GDP starts to recover and increase. So below we see the GDP deflator formula, nominal over real times 100. In this case, we were only given nominal data and GDP deflator data. So we can swap deflator for real and then use this formula here. Real GDP equals nominal divided by the deflator times 100. So that was in the previous uh, video. Again, look in the top right corner and you'll find the link to that, um, to those calculations for practice. Now, another typical type of uh, calculation that's made on a paper two, paper three type of exam for IB economics is calculating percent change, All right, This is a very common type of question. What's the change uh, from one year to the next? So we're gonna calculate the percent change in real GDP from 2019 to 2020. What is the change here? The formula for, for percent change, all right, percent change as a formula is equal to the final value minus the initial value divided by the initial value times 100. Okay, so that's the calculations that I would like you to practice uh, with this video. Okay, so now that you have this formula of percent change, can you calculate the change in real GDP from 2019 to 2020? So go ahead and pause the video, make your calculations, and then unpause and see if you have calculated this correctly. Go ahead and pause. All right, so let's check your work. So here's the formula. Our final year, 2019 to 2020, is right here. So let's go ahead and put in our data into the formula to calculate. So we have 19,168.57 billion minus the initial value, 20,354.83 billion divided by the initial value, 20,354. 0.83 billion, all of that times 100, and that will give us the percent change. When you calculate this, what you should get is negative 5 point, and I'm going to round up to the second significant decimal value, 83%. So here we can see that GDP, real GDP, has decreased by negative 5 point, or is decreased by 5.83%. The economy has contracted by 5.83%. Okay? So the next question I want you to calculate is calculate the percent change from 2020 to 2021. All right? So let's write that down. I want you to calculate the change from 20, the year 2020 in GDP, real GDP, 2022 2021 what is the change here 
Go ahead and pause the video and then we'll check your work. Pause now. Okay, so let's check your work. Let's plug in these numbers into this formula. Okay. So our final value is 19,488. So here we have 19,488.22 billion, I'm sorry, minus, my mistake, minus the initial value, 19,168.57 billion, divided by the initial value, 19,168 point fifty seven billion times one hundred and what you should get is one point sixty seven percent that the economy grew from twenty twenty to twenty twenty one by one point sixty seven percent so the economy is beginning to expand as we exit the pandemic okay now let's not stop there. We can also do some additional calculations. Let's calculate inflation. We can use the deflator to see the rate at which prices are increasing from one year to the next. So I'm gonna write another question here. Let's say question number two, calculate the percent change in the GDP deflator from 2019 to 2020. Oops. That'll be our last set of calculations and then we'll be done with this practice. Okay, so I want you to calculate What's the percent change here from 2019 to 2020? Here you have your formula, final minus initial divided by initial times 100. Please pause the video and do your calculations and we'll check your work in just a moment. Please pause now. Okay, so let's check your work. Let's calculate the rate at which prices are rising. So here we have 109. 109 minus initial 105 divided by initial 105 times 100. And that gives us a value of 3.81%. All right, if, I'm, if I've done my calculations correctly, 3.81%. So that's telling us right here that prices are increasing by 3.81%. 3.81% increase in prices, basically signaling inflation in the economy from 2019 to 2020. Now let's do our final calculation. I want you to calculate the percent change in the GDP deflator from 2020 to 2021. All right, from 2020 to 2020. 21. Go ahead and calculate the change between those two years. All right, from here to here. Please go ahead and pause the video and we'll check your work in just a moment. Okay, so let's check your work. Let's plug in these numbers. Let me choose another color here. So the final value is 118 for the GDP deflator minus the initial value of 109 in 2020 divided by 109, the initial value, times 100. And that gives us, if we round to the second decimal value, 8.26% inflation. Here, the rate at which prices are increasing is 8.26% inflation. That's a very, very high level of inflation, which is the, the word that you're hearing a lot 
now in 2022, going into 2023, demand pull inflation as we exited the pandemic, cost push inflation caused by the Russian Ukrainian war, increasing commodity prices. Um, and so there we go. So that was uh, our practice for today with the use of GDP deflator and calculating percent change. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below and I'll try to create more practice questions for paper two, paper three type of calculations. Thank you so much. And don't forget to subscribe and to like.